In this lesson, we'll take a brief tour of the Unreal Editor, which is a host application that Carbon for Unreal runs in. In the previous lesson, we created a new blank project to work inside of. After waiting for the shaders to compile, you'll be ready for a tour of the editor. Once Unreal has finished launching your new project, you will be greeted with the Unreal Editor. This is where you'll create everything within your project. The default interface is split into di a few different sections, and each section is its own panel slash window that are all resizable and dockable. The main panel of the editor is a viewport, which displays a 2D or 3D view of everything inside your scene. By default it is 3D, and to move around, simply hold the race mouse button, and then use the movement keys WASD to move around. If you find the camera speed too slow, you can use a scroll wheel while still holding the right mouse button to adjust the speed. Additionally, you can also go to the top right and manually adjust the camera speed using the slider. In the top right, you will find the Outliner panel, which is a hierarchical tree view of everything within your scene. In the Outliner, you can organize actors by grouping them together in folders, and you can create one using this button in the top right. Or, you can attach them together and parent one actor to another. For example, if I attach the exponential height fog to the directional light, if I select the directional light, which is now the parent, you can see that I can adjust the position of both of them at the same time. Under the Outliner is a Details panel. Similar to the Object Info Palette in Vectorworks, this is where you can control many different properties and attributes of a selected actor. For instance, if I select the directional light, we can adjust its intensity in the Details panel, and you can see the changes reflected in real time in the viewport. Another important panel that you will frequently use is a content browser. This can be accessed by going to the bottom left and opening the content drawer. This can also be accessed using the keyboard shortcut Control and Space. If you'd like to keep this dock to your layout, you can either press the dock and layout button in the top right, or we can go to the top left of the editor, go to the window menu, and then we can open one of the content browsers. Now you can see that it is docked to the layout, and we can easily click and drag to resize. That also goes for any panel. The Content Browser, like the Resource Manager in Vectorworks, is where you can create, import, manage, and organize all content within your project. To create a new asset or folder for organization, you can right-click within the Content Browser. Let's create a folder and call it Levels. And then if I double click within it, I will right click again and create a new level called Sandbox. This will be a non-destructive test level that we can play around with. If I double click this, it'll first ask us to save this current level and the Sandbox level. So I will just click Save Selected, and then I will name the default level just Default. And now I can drag the default level and the layers into the Levels folder. One important aspect about the Content Browser is that it mirrors everything that is in your Unreal Project Content folder. So for example, we're in our Levels folder and we see all of our levels mirrored in the Windows Explorer window. But please keep in mind that when importing anything into Unreal, Please be sure that you drag the asset into the content browser and not the file explorer in Windows. This is because for different asset types or maybe different import processes, so if you drag anything into the file explorer, it may not properly import into Unreal. Now before we add anything to our empty level, let's go through some important settings windows that can be accessed via the edit dropdown in the top left of the editor. First, let's go to the Editor Preference window, where you can adjust many settings that affect editor behavior. For example, I can search up Use Less CPU when in background, and we can make sure that this is unchecked, as this will prevent Unreal from slowing down when working with other software, such as the Lighting Console. Next, let's go to the Project Settings window, 
where you can adjust many settings specific to your project. Like the editor preference window, all, this, all of the settings are searchable. For example, if we search for anti-aliasing, we will set this to TAA, which is just one of the settings that we recommend changing. Another important setting to know is your default map. So if we go on the left and go to Maps and Modes, here we are able to change the editor startup and the default map. So for this instance, I'm going to change it to sandbox level that we just created. You can find a complete list of our recommended settings for working with Carbon in the description. On our knowledge base in the settings and tips section, if we go to the Unreal Engine settings page, we have compiled a list of our recommended settings that work best with Carbon. So we recommend taking a moment to review all of these settings and changing the ones that you think will be best for your specific hardware and the project that you are making. Keep in mind that editor preferences or editor settings are the settings that will work on all projects while project settings are unique on a project by project basis. Finally, we're going to head to the plugins window. Here we can browse through a variety of different plugins that you can enable into your project. Please keep in mind that some plugins may not be supported by certain license types. Another thing to keep in mind is that some plugins are in an experimental or beta state. So this can mean that they can sometimes be unstable. So we always recommend backing up your project before making any changes to plugin configuration. Now we can search for any plugin that we'd like. So for example, movie render queue. And then to enable a plugin, all you have to do is check the checkbox, and then you'll need to restart your editor. Additionally, if you'd like to see only the plugins that are currently installed in your project, you can go to the top right of the window to the settings menu and check show only enabled. And here we can see all the plugins that are currently enabled in our project. Now that you are familiar with the general layout and interface of the Unreal Editor, we will begin to explore Unreal Asset Types, which will be the building blocks of your project.